All right, guys, so a customer dropped this electric motor off at our shop. This is a 60 horsepower Gardner Denver electric motor. It weighs about 680 pounds and it comes off of a compressor. Now they want us to look at this and see if we can figure out why it failed. So I noticed a bunch of discoloration around this drive in. And obviously we can see that the shaft is not rotating freely. So we probably have an issue with the bearing, but we're going to dig inside of this thing and find out. Now, seeing since I can't rotate this with my hand, I'm not going to energize it. So I'm just going to skip the insulation resistance test and we're going to rip this thing apart. Now this motor has 12 leads coming out of it because it can be ran on dual voltage. Internally, this is not connected as a Y or a Delta, but it is ultimately ran as a Delta connected electric motor externally. Now we can go through and punch mark some of our pieces so that when we put this thing back together, we're going to put it back together the same way that we took it apart. We remove this fan cover and we can see this tiny little plastic fan. And if you guys know anything, you know that I hate plastic fans. They're flimsy. Even though the people that engineered this thing are nice enough to put these two little holes so you can put some type of puller on there. I don't have that type of puller, so I'm just going to pry on the back side of it and pray to God. You'd be surprised just how expensive some of these little plastic fans can be. And we have looked into a 3D printer to make some of these if they do break, but that's another day. Again, one more time, we can see that sloppiness in this drive-in shaft. So I did even punch mark these bearing retainers so that we put them back on the same end that we took them off. Because this actually does have the same size bearing on the drive end as it does on the opposite drive end. We have a little V-seal on this opposite drive-in. This is going to help us keep dirt and debris out of getting into that bearing housing. And you can see it's not cracked. It doesn't look like it's been hot. And when I pulled this cover off, this bearing looks like it's in decent shape. Obviously, we still have to take measurements. I don't see any grease in here, but no grease fittings on the electric motor. Now back to our drive-in that has this discoloration. We're going to have to remove the four bolts that are holding the end bell on and the three bolts that are holding that bearing retainer together. Now, sometimes when these bearings fail catastrophically like this, it can be pretty difficult to get these apart. So we're going to dig into this. We got our bolts out of that bearing retainer. We've removed the four bolts that are holding our end bell on. Now, even though this has this big face and this big lip on the end bell, I'm not going to really want to smack on that because you can crack these things. And if we crack that, we're going to be in big trouble. So we're still just going to try to create a gap right where I have those two punch marks. And now that we got a little gap created between the stator and the end bell, we can go ahead and work this thing off slowly and look at the inside of the electric motor. So inside this bearing housing, it's totally failed. You can see this bearing has gotten extremely hot. That does not look like a happy bearing. I don't know if there's supposed to be any type of seal on the drive end of this. There could have been one that could have melted away because you can see that this was an extreme amount of heat being generated inside of here. Now, when these bearings spin inside of that housing, they wear a big old groove inside of where it fits into here. So this is no longer within tolerance. It'll have to be machined out. We'll have to put a sleeve in there and machine that sleeve back to the tolerance of the bearing. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're going to say, that's a lot of work. Why don't you guys just throw that thing in the trash and buy a new one? I'm not the one that makes those decisions. They're going to get a price for what it would cost to rebuild it. And they're going to get a price for what it costs to get a new one. I will say, though, for whoever stuffed the coils inside of this electric motor, it's actually a pretty clean looking winding. I like the way the phase paper sticks out a little bit in between each one of the phase groups. The bearing spins pretty freely on the back, but I would have loved to have been able to hear this thing screaming as it failed. Now, there's a bunch of different issues with just the shaft alone. You can see all of the different metal wear. You can see the bluing of the steel, meaning this thing got extremely hot. So we can see, obviously, that our drive end bearing failed. What happens when that clearance goes away is that rotor drops inside of that stator. It makes contact and it rubs along in there until it ultimately blows the winding. And you can see right here in the slot where that winding blew out. I tried to get a little different view and you can notice some of those copper balls in the bottom of the frame and the outside of the stator. But that's a pretty big hole. We're going to have to do a core test on this also. I mean, these bearings fail like that and this inner race gets extremely hot. Sometimes it welds itself to that shaft, but we're going to throw a posi lock puller on it. We're going to try to pull on here, but when we're missing balls inside this ball bearing, it's not going to pull on it evenly and it might get kind of side shifted. It might not come off as easy as we would like. That's when you reach for the big old Milwaukee impact and you give her the beans. Now, when I was pulling on it, it did start to side shift on me a little bit. You can see kind of an uneven gap here. So I kind of tapped on the jaw with the hammer and it moved the bearing over just enough that I was able to actually get this thing completely off. Now, we're probably going to have to reach out to the manufacturer and get a drawing of the shaft so that we can at least see if any of these fits are within tolerance. You can tell a bunch of them are worn out. We can't just go ahead and put a sleeve where the bearing goes. What we'll have to do is spray weld that area and then turn it back down to the tolerance of that bearing fit. Now you can see our 200 and our 230 volt are a two delta connection and our high voltage 460 volt connection is a one delta. It's a compressor rated duty motor. It's 60 horsepower, Gardner Denver. And the last thing I'm going to show you is when I was looking at the end bell sitting on a pallet, I even found a little piece of the bearing cage in there. So these parts went flying all inside of this thing when it exploded. Cheers, guys.